Hello and welcome to another episode of the ZTGD News Burst today on the 30th of August. And once again, I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Justin. Hello. Bespectacled, Justin. Yeah, well, fuck contacts. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that'd be a bit difficult, but you know. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised, John. You'd be surprised. Nice. Um, so, how are you anyway? Tired, but I'm good. How are you? I, apart from the technical issues before the show, <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Good, 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 good. What have you been playing? <laughs> uh, nothing. I've been playing nothing. Not yet. Nothing this at weekend all. This weekend will be, I'll be, uh, I'll play some more Saints Row, but that's related really later this weekend, but eh, other than that, nothing. What about you? Um, I played some Saints Row, that was pretty cool. Um, mm. But I've also uh, played to picked up today, uh, today um, Game Dev Tycoon, which Dev is quite good. Uh, it's right. uh, it's um it's on a it's a greenlit game that's on Steam for PC, Mac, and uh, Linux, uh, and uh, it it's essentially. Did you ever play the Game Dev Story uh, no. on the iPhone? Okay, no. it's basically it's a little simulator that you uh, essentially start off as a little dev. Um, one man crew back in the 80s making games and you progress through making games people buy them you you know increase your offices and get employ people and shit like that so um, I've only been playing it for an hour or so but it seems pretty cool so yeah, um, it's the one that had all of the uh, hoo-ha about the one the pirate version uh, I don't know if you read about that a couple of months ago where people were pirating that pirating it but the developers had put in a thing where if you had pirated the game, you'd also get pirates in your game so that you couldn't sell as many copies of the games and you would lose. So I thought that was quite clever. Hmm. No, yeah, no, I didn't read about that. Um, but yeah, that's probably about it, really. Uh, but we shall <laughs> crack on with what we're here for, because no one really cares about what we've been playing. Right. Um, <laughs> and news, again, a quiet week, I think, really. Nothing sort of massive to, to harp on about, um, although the biggest head-scratcher this week was the um, announcement of the Nintendo 2DS, or the Nintendo Doorstop, as I like to call it. <laughs> doorstop. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. It's pure ugliness. The fuck have they made that for? I have no idea. I, I, I guess I, it's for people on a budget, because it's got a really the, attractive price point. No, well, it hasn't. Not really. You know, if you consider the fact that you can get a 3DS, because obviously that the screens are the same size as the ones on the original 3DS, you can get one of those for like 30 bucks more. Yeah, maybe people don't have 30 bucks more, huh? Oh, well, I'd pay 30 bucks to get a console that's actually in 3D and a console that actually protects itself by folding. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting move they decided not to fold it. The f I know it's because it can make it cheaper because you haven't got all of the, the foldy parts, and I'm sure making a big slab of cheese is cheaper than making the foldy 3DS. But it just... I mean, you could have cut corners elsewhere. For example, the camera. You don't need a 3D camera because it doesn't display 3D. So why not take off one of those and save a bit of money there and at least give you a, a case that's going to be protected? Seems odd. Yeah, it, it, uh, when I heard about it, I'm like, okay, well, that's interesting. And everything it can't do. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it hand. was. I think most of the internet just went what? Yeah, it was. Which bizarre. is kind of weird. It's a weird move by Nintendo. They usually make really good, you know, handhelds, and this one's just. It's a head I just think, yeah, it just looks ugly. I, I don't. Yeah. You know, I know it's it's got all of the features with the exception of the 3D part, um, which is cool. You know, you've got Street Pass, you've got... But, I mean, that thing's huge. And it's not like the Vita. The Vita is a handheld. It, all right, it doesn't have a folding case, you know. But it's a nice size. It's comfortable. It it's. I mean, the 2DS looks like a, you know, a huge handheld. Yeah. And it's it just looks an odd shape. I don't know. It... I don't the see the, why they're making the, this. I don't either. And you know, the, after looking at it and the way that and see where the buttons are placed, that just seems like a, it's the screen's hand cramps. Mm. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I haven't held it, but still, ugh. it's a ugly piece of hardware. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can't see what they expect to achieve by this. As I say, if if it was me and I didn't have a 3DS and I looked at the 2DS and a standard 3DS, I would rather pay the few extra pounds and get the 3DS. Um, although I don't use the 3D part, the the fact that it folds, I like that design. I think it's right. you know it's worked for years. Why why change that? Right, it um, makes the portable system portable. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's more comfortable, fits in a bag. You haven't got to worry about the screen getting scratched. Um, you know, it's it makes sense, and yeah. it always has ever since the DS came out. So why? I just I just don't fathom it. What? All right, they want to cut corners and make it a little bit cheaper, but you could have done that elsewhere and still made it a, a nice handheld, one that was comfortable to hold, pleasant to look at, and, you know, sturdy and protective. I just... Just weird. Yeah, I don't know. It was a weird move by Nintendo. Completely weird. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see how the public takes to it. I guess when it yeah. comes out in October. Is October? Is that that? I didn't yeah. catch. Yeah, it's October. I don't know when in October. I just know it's October. Yeah, I'm sure there are other consoles just around the corner that people are going to pay more attention to. You're probably right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this week's a sad week. We say. Farewell to two. Well, I say farewell. We say farewell to one very big part of Microsoft, and say kind of farewell to a name of another. Um, this week saw the beta that most people were in. I think you were in as well, weren't you, Justin? I was in it. Yes. Yeah. Um, the beta ended, and everybody um, got the new fall update for the Xbox 360. Um, nothing major. Change, you know, there's no appearance changes, which I was surprised about. I thought they'd maybe try and uh, make it a little bit more like they intend to make the Xbox One, but there was no, you know, uh, cosmetic changes. The big, big change, however, was uh, the death of the Microsoft points, uh, mm -hmm. which everyone knew was coming. Um, you know, they it's they kind of announced. Well, it was rumored before they announced the. Uh, the Xbox One, but it, it kind of uh, stemmed from there, and you will now be paying real money. Now, for me, paying real money, I think, is a great idea. Um, it works with Steam, it works with PlayStation Network. I bug the crap out of me having to piss about with conversions and how much is this really costing me. Um, the fact that it's now in pounds and pence, or in your case, dollars and cents, uh, I think is is brilliant. But I can also see a, a, a sort of bad effect, in, in, well, a, a negative effect when it comes to making money for Microsoft is the fact that if you now go on the Avatar store, those clothes are in real money. And that does kind of put you off. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know, I was, went through it and seeing real money there instead of, you know, you think they were 80 Microsoft points for t-shirt or 120 for a hoodie or something and it's you know you know what you're buying when you buy them you're buying fuck all you're buying code you, you know nothing you're ever going to use but it was cool and you know you had the other microsoft points oh, i thought you know i might have 100 microsoft points left in my account ah fuck it i'll get a t-shirt now when it's real money it kind of puts me off so um i i don't know whether that'll have an adverse effect on the sales of Avatar stuff, but seeing as they're not carrying Avatars over by the sounds of it to the Xbox One, maybe they've they maybe they didn't make that much money after all. Yeah, I thought the Avatars and clothing are pretty stupid anyway. So my question is, uh, you know how they had Microsoft point cards and I know the PSN has cards you can buy and then enter that code. Microsoft will still do that, won't they? Or you yeah they have a card to buy and then enter the code. Yeah, yeah, you they they're just converting it to real money, so it'll be a, a $10, a $15, $25 a card, just like the PlayStation Network, as opposed to 800, 1600, 1200 points. Um, and if you have got Microsoft points that you haven't redeemed yet, they will still convert them over as well. So you can still put the code in and you'll get the equivalent in, in cash. Um, but yeah, it's it, not. There are people, uh, I should imagine, a lot of people who don't trust Microsoft with their credit or debit card. So I would imagine. <laughs> I trust them better than I do Sony. What?
Are you back? Or am I back? I think you're back. Okay, yeah, I thought it might be me. I couldn't, I didn't know. Um, so I got to a point where you said, my question is, and that's where it froze. Oh, I, I didn't even hear that. I, uh, the last thing I heard from you was, uh, people don't trust Microsoft with their credit card, and I said I, I trust them more than I do Sony. Oh, okay, that's where I got the, yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, Apologise about that, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I guess. Uh, but the thing is, the fact remains is that those points cards were a viable, f you know, form of income for, for Microsoft. I, I think if they didn't have those, they would probably lose a lot of money when it comes to Xbox Live. Um, so, yeah, it's goodbye Microsoft points, and I should imagine a lot of people rejoice. But it's all part of bringing all of those services under one roof. So you've got Xbox Video, Xbox... Um, well, that's the other thing we're going to get onto. Xbox Live Marketplace has now changed its name to um, Xbox Live Games, um, again, to, co to, to fit in with Xbox Live Music and Xbox Live Video. Um, you can have one wallet for all, and I assume that you can take that money with you on Windows 8 or Windows 8 phone if you've got those and buy content across all platforms with that one ID. Uh, that's one thing you couldn't do with Microsoft Points. And so it's all about unifying the services, which is a smart move. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good move. So Go Microsoft. You know, even though they still get booed at conferences and stupid stuff like that. Well, you know, they do it to themselves. Um, off of uh, Microsoft, we'll jump over to uh, Sony and interestingly uh, a new bundle for the PlayStation 4 has been announced um, only in Europe and that doesn't include the UK uh, it's only for Europe territories at the moment um, it's basically the same cost as the Xbox one which is uh, 499 euros uh, it includes the console controller it includes the camera and kill zone shadow fall um, so Maybe they're kind of trying to say, well, you can have, the, you know, if you want all this stuff, we'll give it to you at a cheaper price than if you bought it separately. But it's still going to be the, it's still going to be at the same price as a Microsoft's device and their free game, because obviously in Europe they got FIFA uh, on Xbox right. One. So it's like, well, here's a free game that we'll give you. Um, I think the total, I think you save yourself uh, probably about. Uh, let's have a think. For, uh, probably around about sort of 50, 40, 50 euros if you get them all as a bundle. So essentially, you're probably getting the game for free, which is cool. And of course, you get the camera. And the good thing about that is that you'll be able to use it for the Playroom, which is a pre installed software where you can you know, like shake a little robots out of your controller and throw shit at them. Um, there's no announcement of whether that's coming to the UK or um, US yet. But it wouldn't surprise me. I think that's. A, I think it's a good move. Um, I don't think it's going to, you know, sell as many as a, the core console. Uh, but I definitely think that by Look, what's putting the that together, between, between releasing the Sony system with a camera and Xbox releasing it with Connect, what's the difference? Choice. Why is that a good move? No, absolutely, choice is huge. But uh, still, I mean, there's not going to be a huge stink of it because there is a choice. But still, it's no different than that. Yeah, no, it's just a basically. I think it's just Sony trying to alleviate some of the pressure they had because of the FIFA thing. Um, obviously, it's not such a big deal in the US, but in, the, uh, in Europe, it's a massive, massive deal, this FIFA thing. Um, and I think by doing this, at, putting it at the same price point as Microsoft, um, Microsoft's Xbox One, and giving them a game that people who are going to get the PS4 would be interested in more than likely, and bundling the camera, you're getting the same sort of deal. You're getting a console, the camera, and the game. So I think it's just... It's there to, you know, if you want those things, this will save you a little bit of money, and essentially we're giving you the game for free. So, you know, it's uh, I think it's a good it's game, it's choice. You know, I was probably going to get Killzone. I didn't know about a camera. If the bundle comes out in the UK, that may sway me to get one. It's, I don't know, Let's, we'll see. Let's see if we get it in the UK, of course. Right. I don't think you'll see it in the US. Ah, uh, boo-hoo. I couldn't care less. <laughs> um, I'll hand over to you for the very few quick bursts that we've got. Just the one. Two. Uh, one. Two. Oh, there's two. You didn't space it, ass. Yeah, there's, there is a space. 
Oh, they're on not. separate lines. Oh, they're on separate God. lines. It looks like it's a run on... Shut up, John. You should space it. Once <laughs> the sentence over, you space it. Whatever. Oh, look there at you that. Go. Found it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wonder of Google Docs. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy fourteen: A Realm Reborn gets pulled from the Square Enix site. As a service crash. Yeah. I take it you have no interest in this whatsoever. No, not really. People do. Um, basically, Square pulled the uh, sale of the game from their website uh, just to alleviate the pressure of the servers because um, they ha as You know what? It, I don't know why this stuff makes news anymore. An online game that is quite popular breaks when it first releases. It's, it's Of course it's going to. You, know, you kind of get used to it at this point. Uh, but to try and alleviate it, they pulled digital sales off, and that way it would allow those who bought the game to kind of get on the servers, get their bits and pieces going, and then obviously they can uh, put the game back on sale and, and filter the, the rest the, the rest in as, as demand um, uh, subsides. So, you know, um, I have no interest in the game. I, I don't think I'll ever want to play pay a monthly fee for... Uh, a game, uh, if they were ever to do it free, if they'd done it for free and you bought the game and that was it, I'd probably be interested. But I'm not, I'm not paying ten quid a month to, uh, to to play that kind of game. So makes no odds to me. Me neither. I don't care. Blah blah blah. That's all I heard. Blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, Raymond. Oh, Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. Oh, Ray Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> Rayman Legends has been delayed on the PS Vita, so they can get some final polish on the stupid game. Oh, don't be mean. They're great games. Mm -hmm. You've you've no sense of fun. You're right. I don't. I've yeah, lost oh, it in my bitter old age. Hang on. I know what it is. You don't have any friends to play with. Oh, this is true. <laughs> How can you not like the Origins was amazing. I've picked up Legends today. I'm really looking forward to playing that. Yeah, yeah. It just never struck my fancy. I don't. I don't know. It's not, I don't know. I don't care. You just. Uh, you're just not a fan of fun. No, fun sucks. It's overrated completely. <laughs> um, the thing is though, the uh, uh, recently Sony gave away uh, Rayman Origins on the Vita as part of the PlayStation's. Uh, plus subscription, and you know what? That game really does port well onto a handheld. It's kind of that because the levels were really short, and it was like a quick thing. You could easily play a couple of levels in a, a few minutes and be on your way. It was really kind of um, f good home on the handheld, and um, it would be really nice. And I'm not sure whether they'll do this or not, but. Uh, parts of the level, because obviously Rayman Legends was a originally a Wii U exclusive, and as such, it's got this character that you have to use, um, uh, like a some mosquito thing or whatever. And the idea was is that with the Wii U touchpad, you'd swipe across something and he'd move and interact with the scenery so that Rayman and the other characters can continue down the level. And unfortunately, they've had to put it into the games, uh, the other games, even though there's no control pad, you know, no. Um, touchpad. So it would be really quite cool if they're maybe taking a little extra time to put that functionality into the Vita version, so if you've got both you could do it. Um, I don't know whether that is the case or not, but uh, you know, uh, I I think it would probably sell well on the Vita, well enough anyway. Um, that's a shame. Only a couple of weeks, I say. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the final story we're going to... Um, we're going to talk about is um, another Sony faux pas. Uh, it wasn't Sony fault, to be fair. Um, basically, they had put up Grand Theft Auto V available to pre-order and pre-download, uh, which, if you don't know, is the ability to download the game so it's ready on your hard drive so that when the clock strikes midnight on launch day, it's there for you to play. You haven't got to wait because it's a big game. Game is probably about I think like eight gig or something, eight point seven gig. Um, so you don't want to do you know stroke a midnight download it and then be here for eight hours waiting for your PlayStation Three to catch up with itself. So they'd put it out there for a preload, pre-order and preload, and some clever little rascals broke into the code and released some spoilers. Now luckily so far I have managed to escape all the spoilers. I 
you know, it's, I don't think there are major ones, but if you're trying to go into that game as clean as possible, you kind of want to avoid this stuff. Um, Sony has since pulled it down from the website, uh, from the PSN store, sorry, and um, apologised to both Rockstar and GTA fans. It's a bit of a douche move, though. It's typical hackers. They're assholes. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're typical hackers and douchebags who are trying to cause more harm than good, but, you know, still, you got to secure that shit. If you're going to put that stuff online, you got to be prepared for anything and everything. And clearly, again, they weren't. Yeah, maybe that's the case. I mean, I don't know how these kind of preloaded things work, and I'd imagine that it, had to, it would have been preloaded onto a hacked PS3, which would then allow the, the, the hackers to, to gain access to what was actually 